Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited to be showing you how I cover my scarring and acne breakouts. This is my coverage routine. So if you want to see how I went from this to this, then keep on watching. The universe has blessed me with some slight breakouts today. My skin has been perfect up until now and really, really good. And I've got a few little active, very small blemishes compared to my usual like cysts that are on my face. So I'm not gonna complain about them really because actually overall, everything is still looking very good. And especially this side of my face, the scarring is healing, everything is great, but it is still very obvious scarring on my face. I will zoom in for you. Let's see if we can, is that gonna be, yeah, slow zoom. As you can see, I get a lot of breakouts here. That is normally, I get breakouts in different places and I normally find it's triggered by different things. So forehead tends to be dietary and this is a mixture of things but as you can see there's a lot of scarring especially on this side don't pick your spots kids don't do it this side actually hadn't had breakouts for quite a while so it's looking considerably better apart from this which i did pick last night and i shouldn't have but there was a blackhead and i was trying to get it and should have just like laid his bed this is what my forehead looks like so just a lot of scarring really my skin didn't use to scar too badly up until around about two, three years ago. And I'm guessing that's just what comes with age and having been really like picky with my spots, you know. But that is what we are working with. So a lot of scarring, but I use this same routine for active blemishes as well. And obviously they are way more raised off your face. So it is a little bit harder to cover them, but this routine still does work really well. And I use it day in, day out, regardless of breakouts because the scarring is still quite obvious. And sometimes it doesn't bug me so much, but some days I really just want a super flawless look to my skin. And more recently, I found the perfect routine. I've had some good products for a while that were doing good work, but actually I've started applying them in a different order. I'm really focusing on kind of layering, but layering things that I would never normally layer. So I'm gonna be chatting you through that routine and I'm really excited to share it with you. The one thing I did wanna say before I move on is that you don't need to cover, like I know there are gonna be people that are like, you shouldn't be encouraging people to cover their spots, just embrace your skin. 100% embrace your skin. But if there are days where you're just feeling like, no, I don't wanna see this today, Day, and I would actually like to cover this. This is how I quite often go without makeup and I'm very, very happy to just let my skin breathe. So yeah, don't feel like you have to cover your spots, but if you want to, this is how. And finally, it is really, really warm in the UK right now. So if I look like I'm sweating, it's because I am. So without further ado, let's move on. I'm gonna show you how to cover breakouts, scarring, acne, all of the above. So step one, I've already done my skincare routine. I'm not gonna go into that because I'm not actually a skincare expert. I don't really class myself as an expert in anything to be honest, but that is definitely not my area of expertise. But if you want some skincare advice, I would always recommend Caroline Hirons. I will pop links in the info box below. Once I've done my skincare routine, I have like a bit of a break between doing my skincare. I leave it set and then I'll do my makeup like a little bit later. And I actually start off by concealing any broken and scarred areas. I also do my under eyes whilst I'm using that product as well. And I actually find that particularly my foundation on later just makes everything look a bit more seamless and natural so to cover my breakouts i have been using the kevin aquan foundation balm this is actually a very heavy duty like cream foundation i've not seen anything like this in a really long time it reminds me of like a makeup product from the 90s but it's super heavy coverage it's almost like the nars radiant creamy concealer but with more coverage and a much smoother finish i love it i use the shade medium fb06 it's not a good match for me at the moment i have to say this is a much better match for me during the winter i do need to get an updated one i have a lot of product here still to use up. So I don't really want to get a new one anytime soon. And because I'm putting my makeup on in kind of backward steps or, or what to me seems like backward steps, I just don't really see too much point in getting like a second one unnecessarily. And just to demonstrate in terms of coverage, I am going to show you over that birthmark on my hand. Oh, missed it. Come on. That is the kind of coverage that we are looking at with this product. So you can apply this by using your fingers. I actually like to use a MAC 130S brush. I want to say this is it's like a little stippling brush, like two different kinds of um, bristles in it. And this works really beautifully for applying foundation. It's really small and I find like you can just kind of like really work product in. And I use this to stipple the product into my skin. So I'm gonna bring you in really close so you can kind of see what it's doing. Like I said, it doesn't match my skin perfectly, but I don't mind that because I'm gonna apply my foundation later as you can see the stippling brush applies it very thick and i've obviously gone in with a decent amount of product and you can use less and build up if you want more i kind of know how much i want and need to use to get the coverage 
that I want. But obviously, if you're using this for the first time, always go in with less because you don't want to go too over the top. And one of the reasons I really like using this first is actually because if I put this on over the top of my foundation, it can kind of look a bit cakey. Nine out of 10 times, it will apply really, really well and it will look really smooth and beautiful and seamless. But every so often, I think it's when I'm trying to conceal actual breakouts i find that it just doesn't kind of sit too well i guess because i've got like a full-on breakout so i'm using a little bit more product so applying it this way allows me to apply more product but not have it look cakey because i'm putting my foundation on over the top and i use a glowy kind of like dewy vibe foundation so it just makes everything look really really natural and you don't get that cakiness so as you can see that has done very well in terms of covering my blemishes because i'm more tanned at the moment it does does give a bit of an ashy tone to my skin but obviously if I was color matched correctly it wouldn't be an issue and you could if you wanted a more matte look you could just put this on alone so you can kind of see the difference between my two cheeks you can still see the scarring here ever so slightly it is so strong and so prominent that it is very hard to cover but once I put my foundation on over the top it's just that extra layer of coverage and I do find that if I get it right and I get the layering right I can make it look like they are almost gone. And it lasts all day, it lasts under a mask. I, I don't know how. Is it furring as well in like 30 degree heat? I'm not so sure. I would definitely add a powder into this routine if we were, you know, dealing with 30 degree heat more often. People outside of the UK, please do not come for me. I know that that is not a lot for the rest of the world. But anyway, once you've watched this through, add a powder in if you want, but I do use a different method of setting, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. So we have like an actual, like we have a lot of lumps and bumps around here. And this does help to really smooth over those as well. I'm always quite impressed with how this works. Definitely got a bit heavier on this side, whoops. Sometimes I bring this up to my under eyes as well because it conceals my under eyes really well too. This is a great product. It's really great as a multi-use kind of product so whether it's concealer foundation or you could even use it as a contour in a darker shade by the way no one come for me for my facial hair i have not bleached my upper lip and my cba and i just feel like i should be able to be on the internet without being screamed at for it so uh let me live so some days i literally just spot conceal and go in with my foundation today i have gone in pretty much all over my face it's just one of those days now this scar here i picked it last night and it's being very difficult with me. This is one of those situations where I would normally recommend getting a tiny pinpoint brush and just dotting concealer literally just on that mark. However, I don't have a tiny pinpoint brush at the moment, so I will not be doing that. But that is something you can do if you want this to be like super, super flawless. And I do find as well, which I think is very, very normal, but the older the scarring is, the easier it just seems to cover. Forehead, I do always find it a little bit trickier to cover because it is one of the areas on my face that I would say is slightly less plump. I think that's very, very normal. But I find once I've set the product and I've applied my foundation and then I've got my contour and bronzer and everything on over the top, I don't notice at all. But in the kind of like mid stages, I really kind of see it, but I don't see it so much here. So this is how we are looking after just that one product. Yeah, this is how we are looking. We are very close up to my face right now. No normal person would be seeing this close up to do bear that in mind. Like you can still see slight marks, but it's because I'm showing you so, so close up. You can see I've got some active kind of breakouts here. I've got my old breakouts here and I've got my fresh little friend that I picked last night, stupidly right there. So that's what my cheeks are looking like. And then on my forehead, that is what we are looking like. So you can see some of the scarring is still shining through. I find once I've done like my contour and everything, it's just a little bit less obvious. Sorry, the baby has a running wild today. So that is how we are looking literally just after the Kevin and Kwan foundation balm. And now I am going to set all of this using the Fenty Beauty What It Do setting spray. This is so great. It's one of those like really nice setting sprays that's not too matte. I don't find that they look nice on my skin. I don't find them comfortable. I love a dewy setting spray and this one works really beautifully. It's a really fine mist. It smells incredible and I find it sets makeup amazingly well. So I actually use that a fair few times throughout this routine just to make sure that that is all really set in place super nicely. Now whilst I'm waiting for that to set, I do my brows because I want to make sure, especially on my cheeks, which get oilier and I actually use a fair amount of product on, I want to make sure that that is going to move as little as possible. I'm just gonna do my brows quickly. So with my brows at the moment, I use the Anastasia Dip Brow Pomade. 
this is what it looks like and a tiny sigma angled brush i will link everything in the info box as always and i literally just do the underside of my brows and kind of sometimes through the mid sections at the moment fill in any sparse gaps extend the tail slightly go up through the middle just so when i brush my brow hairs up it doesn't look too gappy but i really focus on trying to get this underside as filled and straight as possible this shade of dip brow pomade is ash brown so it's actually just ever so slightly too light for what i would like the underside of my brows to be like it's the perfect like neutral tone but it could just be a fraction darker and would help me to build out a lot better it's perfect for filling in the middle it matches perfectly but when you're building out a brow outside of your natural brow line you do want something ever so slightly darker normally just helps it to look a bit more real and with the front section of my brows i just like to fill it in really really softly and then with this one i also just add a little bit more there so that it has like the same rounded shape as my other eyebrow and then i'm just going to use brow gel to set them in place i am in desperate need of a new brow gel so if you have eyebrows that are like a similar color to mine so that you can recommend a good like ashy mid brown that is pigmented and sets really well and adds a lot of like extra brownness i would love to know your recommendations I'm just going to conceal a tiny bit under my eyes as well i'm using the fenty beauty pro filter concealer this is the shade 270 it's slightly pinky toned and i really enjoy that because it works really nicely underneath my eyes i'm doing that now and i will use the excess that's on this brush later to clean up my eyeshadow i don't wear very much eyeshadow at the moment but i like to make this bit especially look really neat when i do that concealer really brightens under my eyes and adds a lot of coverage without being too matte and i really love that like my under eyes look really natural really healthy it is a godsend when i haven't had too much sleep moving on i'm going to be using the fenty beauty pro filter hydrating long wear foundation i'm using the shade 240 in this and i'm really happy with the color of it actually i probably could get a better this comes in so many shades i probably could get a better match for my skin tone but i always order online so it's difficult i'm going to be using the same brush i used for my concealer and what i'm going to be doing is just patting that onto my skin i don't use swirly motions i don't drag we are literally stippling and i'm literally taking that all over my face in areas where i don't have breakouts like this area here that i'm currently applying foundation to i can use like swirly motions because there's just nothing that i'm worried about disturbing this foundation because it is dewy sets beautifully like i am the biggest fan of this foundation it is gorgeous and i find sometimes you apply it and you're like oh yeah it's okay you know i'm not I'm not thrilled with that but because it is dewy it basically melts into your skin and sets and it is just stunning so just patting my scarred areas if i hadn't picked that scar last night we would have had some seriously amazing coverage results here so moving on to my forehead i cannot wait until I finish filming so that I can gel my baby hairs. So once again, I'm just stippling the product in. And the reason I like to use this brush for stippling, even though it's not strictly a brush that you would normally use for stippling, is because the bristles aren't tightly packed together. So it's actually very gentle when you're stippling and it doesn't disturb the product. And what I will say is this is a lot more work than if you were using powder products. Powder products are very quick to cover but because i love a natural dewy look i want a natural dewy look but i also want the coverage of like a matte product or powder product and this is the best way i have found to achieve that however one other thing that i will say is do keep an eye on the products you are using dewy products in my experience do have a higher likeliness to break me out these ones don't and i love them for that but i do find powder products in general tend to be much better in terms of not breaking me out that might just be me other people might seriously disagree so that is how we are looking after the kevin o'quan foundation balm and the fenty beauty pro filter hydrating foundation i'm going to go back in again and use the what it do spray because i'm going to use a cream product for my contour and bronze so i don't want to disturb any of the product that's on top of this this being my scarring by the way i feel like that was a really poorly constructed sentence so then i just leave my skin for another couple of minutes and i'm going to use my Too faced palm springs this one smells incredible i'm just going to use this to apply my eyeshadow i've been using this palette so much recently just add the lightest matte creamy shade to my eyelids this is the one area where i'm not going dewy at the moment i actually really prefer a matte eyeshadow look right now and then i'm applying the shade rum tiki 
really really lightly to mostly the outer corner of my eye and then just blend it all over my eyelid just so we get a really nice seamless transition between the two shadows and I just repeat that again until I'm kind of happy with it some days I go heavier with a brown shadow some days I go lighter some days I add a bit of a shade called saucy and bossy which is this one here and that's really gorgeous as well I'm not going for something so pink today though and there we go such a gorgeous shadow color it looks a lot more ashy on screen I'm not sure how it will come out once it's with you guys on youtube but it's actually a really nice warm mid brown and then adding this matte brown shade to my lash line it looks a lot more purple on camera it's like a cool tone dark matte brown called byob and i just apply that really lightly to my upper lash line in the outer corner and then like i said i'm using the excess on my concealer and foundation brush to just really neaten that up because as you can see when i apply eyeshadow i always get a bit down here so i'm not skilled enough to not have that happen so i literally just use my concealer brush and doing that also just brings your eye up really nicely in this kind of shape it's like one of those optical illusions where if you've got eyeshadow down here it's just going to kind of drag your eye down a bit and i like for my eyes to just it's like a mini facelift without actually having to do anything to your face. Next I'm going to be using my beloved Bare Minerals Lash Topia Mascara. If you've watched a few makeup videos from me you've probably seen this before. I live for it. Also can we talk about how this shot right now looks exactly like a thumbnail from like five years ago? It's really freaking me out. I will pop it on the screen. So as you will probably be able to see most of the effort with my mascara is on the outer corner. I just find it gives a really nice shape to my face but I never forget to do my inner corner lashes this is something that I neglected up until about a year ago and I find it just completely changes the way my lashes look it makes them look so much fuller almost like full slashy I just love this mascara like I know we all love a good drugstore mascara no one loves a good affordable mascara more than I do but this is just incredible it never like shrinks throughout the day I always used to find with my drugstore mascaras they would like look amazing when I first done them and then the lashes like the product would almost set and then it would like shrink back in I don't know if that is me maybe I'm mad but yeah this one just doesn't seem to do that and it just gives the most gorgeous fluttery look I am just obsessed I love it so much so it's worth noting that this is an old mascara like this one I showed you the new one this one is completely battered but I use the old one just for every day because it just gives a really subtle soft look to my lashes but if I want to go in with a little bit more volume and a little bit more thickness I use the new one and as you can see I do more with the end of the mascara wand with any mascara at the moment than I do with the actual like base of the brush i almost use the length of the brush to get the bulk of the product on and then style the lashes using the end of the wand just helps to really control where you want to apply product and i also try and make sure the ends of my lashes have as little product on them as possible just like a really really fine coat rather than being really heavily coated with mascara because it gives that real like false lashy kind of look but without having to wear false lashes because cba who really has the time love a false lash but this is just a little bit more convenient for me so that is my my eyes done very very happy i'll always go in with a q-tip at the end of my routine as well and just tidy up any like tiny bits where i've maybe like got any on my eyelids the cleanup needed is actually i think going to be very minimal today compared to usual to be honest now this is the point where i'm like suze do not balls this up i'm going to be taking my fenty cream bronzer contour do they call it a bronzer or a contour cream bronzer so this is shade 05 teddy and i'm taking a spectrum brush and i just start by applying that to my cheeks here and i do bring it down which is the danger zone and i've had so many of you lately asking how i get pre cream product or any product over the top of my breakouts and like concealer without disturbing it stippling is always like the number one method of application it's worth saying as well if you want like a more natural look beauty blenders are great but i do find they don't add the best coverage and i find that they can because they're so watery it can almost like break down makeup so if i'm doing my full coverage routine i don't use a beauty blender but on an everyday basis i love a beauty blender and i know some of you might like be thinking what about beauty blenders so that's my feels on it if it's just like an everyday natural makeup beauty blender all the way if i was working with a matte product it might be different but i'm not and then i bring my bronzer down and i just really lightly stipple that in so that we're not disturbing the product too much and because we have set my face so many times it 
doesn't disturb too much but i am very very careful and this makeup obviously does take me ever so slightly longer than my usual 10 minute routine which is literally like an apply and go situation but this still if i'm not talking to someone only takes me like maximum 20 minutes so i'm just applying that down my nose as well we can drag here i don't need to stipple because i don't have any breakouts around here do my chin and then for my forehead i try not to disturb my breakouts too much but they are some of them are slightly precariously positioned so I just very carefully stipple the product into my hairline and I don't have to go too heavy because I do go in with a powder bronzer so this is how we are looking after contour the contour is a bit ashy so like I said I'm going to go in with a warm bronzer in just a few steps and that will just help to kind of warm that up a little bit but I do love an ashy contour because I just think it looks a bit more natural a bit more real but as you can see I have not disturbed my base which is great. Next up, I'm gonna be using the MAC blush in Peaches. I've been loving this blush for a little while now. I used the Fenty Beauty bronzer brush, oddly, to apply it. And I actually really like blush in this area, even though I've got a lot of scarring on it. I kind of risk disturbing my base because I actually think that adding like a little pop of blush actually almost like distracts does it distract does it cover i don't know but i just find it tends to help the appearance of breakouts a little bit i'm not sure what it is there might be someone out there that can tell me i do find that it tends to almost take away from the scarring a little bit so i take that across my cheekbones the majority of it is kind of concentrated in the center of my face and i also take it a little bit onto my nose as well just for a nice sun-kissed look i don't know if i'll continue that into winter but i really like it as part of a summer makeup look i'd normally take bronzer here as well and i just find the two together work really really nicely next i'm going to use my fenty beauty bronzer in private island this bronzer is disgusting so i'm not going to show it to you too much I just tap a little bit onto my nose let me bring you out so you can see my whole face so i'm going to sweep it across my forehead kind of tap it across my cheeks just so i don't disturb my makeup too much i also take a tiny bit under my eyes as well a bit over my ears and just over the bottom half of my face just so there's not too much of a contrast between top and bottom generally tend to leave my chin fairly untouched just so it kind of gives that more like elongated effect to the eye just doing everything to try and lengthen my little moon face you know and i'm finishing off by applying my lip liner this is so hard to do whilst talking i'm using the charlotte tilbury lip liner in iconic nude this is my current go-to new lip liner i love it it's that perfect not too cool tone not too warm shade so that is my first layer of lip liner i always leave the center for something else today i'm going to be using the kkw beauty lip liner in peach 2 oh, this is so like lovely and warm and just like a really pretty pinky peach color and then i'm just gonna blend that in this is a new lip liner so it's in that really like still really sharp phase but once they wear down they always seem to get creamier and just like I can just kind of swipe them all over my lips without having to blend. I'm just going to add another layer so the colour is a bit more bold. I love that. And then I'm just going to add a bit of peach one to the centre. I love KKW Beauty. They need to find somewhere in the UK to ship from because it's such a ball like getting hold of their products. But the lip liners are so good. There is no other brand, I feel like, in the UK that does colours quite like KKW. You know what I've forgotten to do? My bottom lashes. What was I thinking? I always use an old mascara wand for my lower lashes because they just need so much less product so that is my lower lashes done final step if you're going out and you want your makeup to last all day for me i would kind of skip this because i've already set my makeup several times and i'm just at home but if you're going out if you're wearing a mask if it's hot and you don't want a powder another layer so basically add this to every step when you're doing your like heavy coverage, when you're doing an all over kind of sheer base, I would call it, because I don't think the Fenty Beauty is particularly heavy coverage on its own. For a dewy foundation, it definitely has so much more coverage than average and I love it and I would recommend it on its own. You could still get a similar effect stippling it in over your breakouts, but I do think the addition of the Kevin Aquan foundation balm before, you can't beat it. So after your first two steps, set each time and then at the end once you've applied all of your powder and cream products on top set you could do it after every single layer but i think that would be excessive some people might think what i've done already is excessive but i love the coverage that i get from this product combination and from this routine and you can really see the difference on days when i use it versus days that i don't what i might do is come back tomorrow and show you what it looks like if i just did my foundation routine normally and show you the difference without the setting spray and doing my makeup in a more conventional 
foundation concealer blush bronzer kind of way like i said very happy with the coverage this is what we are looking like on my cheek areas very very dewy you can powder if you want you do you i don't love powder but i just love that glow my skin is very like dehydrated so i personally don't do very well with powder unless it will literally be like here and here that would be it and maybe under my eyes a little bit this is how we are looking on my forehead it's not as fantastic but like i said i do find if i go too much with it it will look a little bit cakey and i don't have the right brush for spot concealing but that is definitely something that you can do if it really really bugs you for me the contour and the kind of shine i get on my forehead tends to kind of like distract from the scarring a little bit so i generally when i'm like talking to people looking in a mirror i don't notice it that much but yeah because of the way my skin sits on my forehead and it's not the plumpest area like here is so much more plump i do find it a little bit harder to conceal so this is my finished full coverage scarring acne breakout coverage routine that is such a long title i don't know if i got that in the right order but that is the routine i hope it was helpful i'm not a professional makeup artist this is what i've just found works best for me and i just really love the way it looks i'm always really really happy with my makeup when i do it in this order and those are also all the products i'm using on pretty much a daily basis sometimes like i said i'll go for like a lighter coverage so i won't use all of them some days i go without blush some days i will literally just do like brows and like a lip but for those of you that wanted like an everyday makeup routine that is pretty much it and those are the products that i'm using and loving so much it doesn't change a lot but i really wanted to do this routine just so you can see the new order in which i do my makeup and then as you can see when you see me on camera in like the normal non-zoomed up way you could not tell that i had that much scarring so yeah that is going to be it for me today i hope you guys have enjoyed this please give it a thumbs up if you did leave me a comment and subscribe if you are new i would love to have you back here for more videos and i will see you guys again very 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 soon goodbye